Delhi, 41, Antonio Lobaido, 69 is Andrea Pagni, and 77 is Simon Passi. And here we see Switzerland here, the Turkish team here, winning the start of the game now in ball possession from the beginning. They're starting hard, they're starting quick, and they're... It looks like they really want to win this match here. They're coming immediately attacking, fully, heavily attacking the goal. Nevertheless, no clear chance from the up starting the first 30 seconds here. Italy defended properly. So let's see who's going to win this match. I think both teams are quite similar from their, let's say, level. I, I am expecting here to have a close match. Switzerland, Zurich is uh, used to play in a super deep pool with 5 meters deep and 20 wow, meters long. Really On the other hand, we have Italy, also we know, if you have been at the Firenze Cup, also the Firenze Cup pool is super deep and super long. Both teams are probably not super familiar with such small pools, because here we have just like 3.5 meters depth and 12.5 uh, meters long by, uh, let's say, 10 meters wide. So the dimensions here are small in comparison to other pools you have all around the world so it's like the smallest sizes you can have in underwater rugby uh, due to the requirements and here we see a three throw from for italy execute slowly they take the time changing players and now you've seen the captain gabriele passing the ball on the left hand side open side here and it looks this is also a different game style here though the italian players are also Ball possession. They are not looking to to to, to uh, counter attack immediately the goal. They just want to go more calm, a bit in the water, trying to keep a bit the time and the ball. And let's see which strategy here will win at the end. This match will also find a winner, as every match of the Champions Cup. So there will be a penalty shooting afterwards if the result will be zero zero. So far we have uh, almost two and a half minutes played, and it's like still equal and we do have still the blue team with just team uh, 10 team members mm -hmm. which right. is uh, less the other team is full settled and can relax exchange on squad, every position yeah. which is great so that may be the reason they're a little bit like hesitant keeping their might be, might condition be. and We keep talking, but if we don't see, yeah, don't see anything, but coming back. So, seven minutes for the first half, still there. And it looks like the teams are a little bit finding themselves, or like finding the strategy with the other team. And it might be, it might be, it's like a testing, for, but here we have yeah. seen so far the best first chance, but I also think that the goalkeeper here was quite deep with the shoulder in the basket. I don't know if this was a call. So far, yeah, it is. It's a penalty shooting. So my prediction was right. To be really honest, this was ah. attacked. We have yeah. seen here, it was probably Andrea managing with the 25. She was with the shoulder in the basket. So here's a penalty shooting. It will be now in favor for Zurich. So the first attack here, we have seen the first proper really attack resulted into a penalty call against Firenze so it will be all a 1-1 one, one situation so one Zurich player is attacking against one defender he has 45 seconds time to do so the defender needs to stay 45 seconds um, defended or he needs to get in ball possession and brings the ball out of the pool so it means um, over the surface so let's see who is going to Defend who is going to attack. We try to provide you their names soon. And here we see like number two is defending the captain Gianni Gabriele. And we see the attacker from Zurich. Oh, and it was executed very well. Fortunately, I could not see the number. Maybe it was Matthias Dufour with number seven. I'm not fully sure if you, please, uh, Zurich guys, if you have seen who has scored here, just write it in the comments. I would say it was um, Matthias Dufour. Not 100% sure, but um, 
yeah let's see if anyone else from Zurich could here provide me with the name so just write in the comments we're going to read that so Zurich 1-0 in front after a penalty call do the shoulder in the basket let's see what the Italian team from Firenze could do to come back in this match and they're still having the ball the white team struggle it's like uh, not clear what's going on there now and you another see here attack. fast break they are more like uh, oh this was a bad pass here super yeah. intercepted by italian players here from Firenze and now but there was again a scrum it, Italy here with just 10 players at the tournament while we have on the other hand a full squad on the on the Swiss team again. and here Zurich. another attack oh this was quite close was a pass or the try to score something but it was like a stop by the face by the mask of the goalkeeper something between a pass and a scoring try I'm not really sure but Still here now, Italy, Italy here, Fiorenti in ball possession, trying to get on the opponent side, but these passes are too long and sometimes even too dangerous. I don't know why they're trying always to like push the ball through two players. This is yeah, not not super great to be honest. High risky. Yeah, okay. risky. It's it's hard if you are a player now playing with your team and someone is making like that risky passes and losing the balls because you always need to put so many so much effort into to get the ball back you know everyone here is super physical playing but now here it's a pressure so it's like a certain waves here from Firenze and now here they're trying to keep the ball close to the basket was as good but they are looking a bit challenging with that so for for Zurich it looks super easy here they're super relaxed in the basket going around the forward here makes a lot of pressure on the goalkeeper they're always so there's not a oh now we have a, a great situation here the goal was stolen 25 here in ball possession right now Mene, Andrea Menegin here tries to could not bring the ball but this this is a quite good opportunity if you have like a, a super defending team try to bring their out of like out of control just to make something tricky here for example was like sneaking on the goalkeeper position here and so that they are starting to be unstructured, that they are starting maybe to, to acting with fouls or trying to be unfair. And this could easily result into a goal, but here they could not use this, this stolen basket. So far it looks quite controlled match from Zurich side. sold it into a penalty call in the first half and now we are still here one minute 30 to go and here Gianni number two the captain Gabriele could like here interception the pass but we now here in like a it's another referee call like quite from the view from the game a different level like we saw before it's like a little bit more struggling round but Zurich is quite clear what they're doing and Blue is defending high with high power and they are really getting and intercepting but not scoring like let's see we have 45 seconds left here in the first half so far I'm not really sure what, what advice I would give to Ferenzi to come here back to the game. I would maybe uh, like recommend them to, to pass no, a bit proper and don't be that like don't be that stressed, don't be that uncontrolled. Now here you see it better when you make some clear nice passes it's so much easier here to get close to the basket but now here this was also a shit pass you need to say so it dropped down and it was easily could be picked up by the defender from Zurich 
and immediately uh, lead it in the counter attack here it was again Gianni Gabriele he's like the man of the match now try to defend the penalty is here stealing a lot of balls while he's still goalkeeper so this is a super nice performance of this guy here we can see now sitting five people on the bench so let's say we have 11 Italian players against 15 Zurich players okay. and now we have the half time break half time here in match 35 of the tournament we is going to see Ferenc in blue playing against uh, Zurich in white and there's a half time break they're going to exchange the sides going to go on the other side and now we see here in the white team the Zurich team here coming together to discuss the situation I got the confirmation that the penalty the first goal for Zurich was executed by Matthias Dufour so he brought his team in the leading position 1-0 after a penalty call in the first half and um, yeah let's see what Firenze the team that the Italian champion can do here to come back to the match so far they did not really have a really proper action opportunity to score to equalize either neither so I think they are acting quite good to defend and they are small actions really ex yeah they are good in defending expertise, yeah. experts and, and they're then good in it's defending, not going forward it's but not long enough this, yeah. um, this action to to finally score I think they the are lacking side. in their passing performance when it comes closer to the opponent's goal so this is yeah. something they need to improve here to gain really proper scoring chances otherwise they will lose the ball frequently and yeah it will never happen that they will come they will have this this one one situation or a good scoring po or getting in a good scoring yeah. position on the other hand you've seen uh, the Zurich team they started from the very first minute with a lot of pressure they just immediately attacked the goal but also here it was not super efficient so they just tried to put a lot of energy in but they also lost quite often the ball so let's see so you don't think you know the outcome now I see my prediction is right now here that Zurich is going to win maximum of it 2-0 I don't think there will be a lot of more goals in the second half I'm more expecting mm -hmm. them because they are super they are quite organized well organized in their defense there was no real proper pressure from Firenze so far even they let them play a bit in the corner so they give them the space to play in the corner and always when a when a Firenze player uh, tried to attack the basket the defense the goalkeeper the defender they were prepared they were ready um, they didn't went out of brief there was no big gaps the the attackers the forwards they really did a proper job so from the organization and the defense was super nice and even when they got the ball they had it much easier to um, to make the meters to get out of their of their pool side yes. while on the other side Ferenc was struggling team. always they got many balls but after two passes they lost it yes. so this is the issue on the Ferenc side and this match oh, it could, of course it could it, the reason could be that they're having just 11 players of course okay. it's more pressure on, on, on uh, less shoulders but um, nevertheless so far I see a favor on the Zurich side but let's see what they can do. There's a five, three minutes break we had seen. This gives, the break gives you time to breathe, gives time to recover, and maybe they're coming also up with a lot of pressure from the very beginning and trying to equalize here. If they can equalize, this will be then super nice to see how this game is going on. Um, and these are the surprises, really. Yeah, but I, I also, yeah, and this, to be honest, really this year and this match, what I've seen right now in this first half. Uh, I would think it would be it's now super tough for Firenze I think Zurich is gonna win this match but let's see, let's see. maybe you know the team from France uh, from previous games you know who's national team player as well yeah there are, there are a lot of in Italy they don't like they don't have so many super engaged players they're willing to travel all around the world and the Italian team participated in Graz was also uh, mainly based on on a Firenze team I think so I'm not really familiar how many there are uh, players from other teams but of course the core team was also from Firenze uh, Switzerland for example they I'm not really sure but I, I, I do mind to remember that they have not participated in, in Graz 
now it's dangerous. So we see here now again Zurich attacking and we see again gaps on the on the side of uh, Firenze so they're not really properly lying here example here for oh, example and there's the second goal and again Michael Dufour with number seven his second goal of the match 2-0 lead for Matthias. Zurich yeah Matthias Matthias Dufour well done well done here 2-0 and this will be super hard now for Valencia to equalize here to make two goals so far they are like yeah Zurich is here dominating the match and uh, Valencia needs to find a way needs to find opportunities here to to get back to the match otherwise they're going to lose this but it's always the same there they're losing the ball and then right here now they are swimming to last back. It's all again Gabriele who is winning the ball. It's always the captain. He's the player of the match here with his black wristband. He's always like gaining the ball. He's always like able to be as a pass receiver. Defending, attacking. It's a, like a, it seems like a one-man show from him. So super engaged player. Um, Unfortunately, they need a bit more of them. As you see here, the ball is just dropping without any hand contact, and it, immediately you have a counter attack. And this is what I mean with this pass quality issue. Um, this is the minimum thing you need to do to get a proper match here. Uh, to play a proper match, you need to pass, and the pass need to be like like from hand to hand, and not from hand to bottom. <laughs> okay. So. It's really amazing to listen to you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's really making fun, seeing how you engage, uh, just watch. And that's the spirit also to be seen underwater. It's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. And the guys here are really fighting hard. Although we are commenting that way that, oh, they're losing the ball, but they are really hard fighting for it. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. So of course both teams they don't want to lose here and they want to yeah. want to start it they keep fighting till the end and at least the game is not over there's still 6 minutes and 40 seconds left You see here another like hard counter attack now here from the Zurich team this should be like uh, Marcel Feder probably it was here who attacked and passed the ball on the other side and then it was like a uh, like like tackled and and scrum from starting from the Italian players and you will see the referee call it comes from the bottom so the deck referee here is uh, giving a signal and uh, since the uh, Zurich players are swimming back I, I assume it will be in favor for Firenze yeah. Yeah. so Firenze here a bit time to yeah. breathe a bit time to come back and now let's see how many passes I can do one two three and this is what is important to have proper clear passes here to come back to the man in the fourth pass and now 25 is a bit space and a bit time to attack and this is really even the defender here is holding the attacker he has still time and space to attack here and this is what Quirente needs more quick proper passes on their way close to the basket and this brings them back in the game I think they are they didn't lose Ball for a couple of um, this is super now. nice this is what they need to do more and that's also a chance when you see moving like this not losing the ball it can end in a score yeah five minutes left there's a 2-0 lead for Zurich both goals have been made by Matthias de Vour here the first by a penalty the second here out of the match out of the game and here is another penalty throw in favor for Firenze. So maybe, let's see, maybe they can come back to the game. Right now it looks like they are waking up. Now they are playing more properly. Passing more strict, more carefully, more concentrated. Even here they are taking now, they are they're, they're going into these 1-1 one -one fights. They are taking these fights yeah. on, they are getting the ball out. Here is another opportunity. Crapping the goalkeeper. Oh, oh he lost the ball at least. Right. 
So Marcel Keller could end. receive the ball, passing. It's again here. This is uh, Xaveri Orozco we have seen here with the number 43. Martin. Nearly four minutes left. Second half of the game, number 35. So two goals for Zürich already. And of course, if Firenze could have the chance now to score, there's still enough time here to equalize. So the game is not over yet, and if they would go on with this pattern they've shown in the last couple of minutes, with the nice passing, with this nice attacking, it may also result into a goal, and this brings them back to the match. But now yeah. we see here again, Marcel Vetter here with attacking from above the goalkeeper from Zürich. Passing back, and now we see a second wave here, but he's alone. And this is too easy, this is too simple. Contact. And now you see Ferenc now getting the ball, trying to make meters here. Passing properly, yeah. Next proper pass. Now is the space, there is another... No, he's Not missing the next opportunity to give the ball. Available. The right. next wave is missing here. Now they need to play more offensive. They need to put everything in front to get here the chance to score. It doesn't matter if you're losing 3 or 4-0 at the end. If you're that close, you need to score. Let's see, 2 minutes 40 seconds, there's still enough time here to go back, to come back. Let's see another chance here, the ball and dropped the ball down. Dropping. And now Zurich are in ball possession, pass. coming back. But here's also Firenze, they're doing too less when they're losing the ball, there's no pressure immediately. They need to start the forechecking immediately after losing the ball. Trying to bring pressure on the ball, trying to, to get the ball back. And they're watching too much here. They're just focusing on their defense, swimming back. And this gives Zurich a lot of space, a lot of time to organize their, it's their attacks. a sign of less condition. It may be less condition, of, as we already mentioned, there are just 11 players here. It might be a bit unstructured. We've seen also here some of the players are older. Not sorry, they are old, but older than others. So they're not, not that young <laughs> and fresh anymore. I, I also feel that, you know, being... Being like 21 is different than being guy. 32. Oh, yeah. You are not that agile, you are not that fast anymore. You, it, it's even harder to recover That's after true, a sprint. But you're experienced when yeah. you're older. <laughs> so you could better. This we discussed this again this morning, or but, we but, had this discussion already, yeah. to say a good what mix is, is the balance good. of yeah. having a team? Definitely. What, what is the mixture? Old, you need experienced players, definitely. Yeah. You need like confidential players and you need of course like let's say working people in the water you need leaders and you need workers and these workers these are the bringing the effort in the water they're sprinting they're attacking they're working hard yeah. and uh, it seems like the Zurich is having a better mix of that and because they have, are playing a bit more dominant nevertheless we see here now there's a break Referees are coming together. There's one minute 24 seconds left here. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but it's an official break. So the uh, captains are asked here to come together. Both captains are asked to come to the referee. Maybe there's a certain discussion. Okay. There's a bit less than, so there are 84 seconds left. In theory, it's enough to score twice, but it really? will be super hard. It will and be super, super, fast. super hard. If you immediately, maybe they, they continue with a referee ball, you're going there Who and you're you scoring think? immediately, Who then they're restarting the match. You just need to, of course, get in ball position and then bring everything, like, like throwing everything in the front. But it will be super, super, super tough. Who can you imagine would be able to make two scores in 48, uh, 84? This is sports. Sports can do everything, yeah. Right. We thought it would be just 10 guys in the Firenze team, but yep. you said it's 11, so it's just one less. So it's that making the big difference between those, yep. you think? It, it, it can be, of course. If, if you think about it, like, like years ago, it was normal to play with 11 players. This is just a, a new new rule introduced, like let's say six years ago, where they allowed teams to play with 12. Or initially, like 12 years ago, it was completely normal to play just with 11. 
So you had like a like a let's say an exchange player on each position, except of the goalkeeper position. Okay. Most of the teams played with three goalkeepers, two in the border, one on the bench. And even here you can like play a bit more with your with the power and even the task here or the the, the delegation of the test, what people need to do in the border. But now the free throw is in favor for Zurich here in white. And they're also coming heavily attacking the goal. Here we see number 73 it might be, or Daniel Yusin, probably we have seen here, or 13, Martin Wernle, I'm not sure, but it was a 3, double digit number with a 3 at the end. There's another referee call now, but the time is running, another favor for Zurich, and now I would say that's it. Right. Two goals in less than one minute, running time, this will be not possible for Zurich. Yeah. Chances going down for... Nevertheless, well done here by Firenze, the first, like, the decision point here, or the game changer was definitely the penalty call against uh, the Firenze player for shoulder in the basket, um, this 1-0 lead, oh, and if you see, 3-0 Marcel Vetter in the last 25 scoring seconds. the last, the 3-0, now we are done this game is decided 3-0 in favor for Zurich 10 seconds left here running time time is not stopping great match well at the end a bit high I would say for them to, they were also playing a very good match here they got the penalty call this was executed by um, Matthias Dufour who made a 1-0 afterwards there was another goal by him out of the match and then at the end like what was it, 30 seconds or 20 seconds uh, till end of the match, we had uh, another goal, the 3-0 from number 3, Marcel Feta. Would and you think it. if they had played, as we saw in the second half, these um, passes, which yeah. are really great, yeah. if they have played from the beginning, it would be a different? They've improved, definitely they've improved their passing, like the passing quality in the second half, the uh, defensive team. Of course, it would be affecting and resulting in much more like a uh, presence closer to the basket of the Zurich team. Um, nevertheless, we also need to consider that Zurich here was really defending properly, though there was not any real clear chance in favor for Trenzi. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I think maybe there was just a couple of players or maybe an important player missing on the Firenze side because they come chase here with 11. Um, yeah. Every year it's quite close. This year was in favor of Zurich. Let's see how it will be then next year. Because I'm, I'm supposing they're going to meet next year again. <laughs> Great. Okay, uh, this Hello. is Wolf and Annika. Wolf and Annika. So now it's time for Barcelona against uh, Boston Nowals, right? Yeah, this will be a tough game. I think uh, these two teams uh, will face probably on the same uh, level. Well, what's that? New screen oh. for the basket, so it disappears. I haven't seen that yet. Wow, this is this is looks awesome. Oh, looks looks. There is it's, a rectangle. It's, it's, it's like the green screen from yeah. from cinema. This is uh, the white screen for. Probably what? the the one of the teams gets the screen so they can hide their basket. Hi. Have seen this idea. before? That's Hi, totally hide and seek and underwater rugby. Ah, maybe for the color uh, test. Ah, for the color white test camera. Yeah, ah. yeah, probably that's could be the reason. So what's your estimation? You played with uh, Barcelona, you know them? Yeah. So, Boston Airworlds, have you seen uh, uh, a game before uh, here in the Champions Cup? No, Cup-Net? I haven't seen, seen the games before. I was around doing stories. Um, I guess this will be a heavy fight. Uh, yeah, I think it will be a tough game. Barcelona lost in the penalty shootout against Vienna. 
really, really disappointed. So I think right, right now they're really wanting to win really badly. Yeah, but so. I watched uh, Boston prepare for this game and I think they're up for it too. Yes. So it, uh, I think it will be physical, um, fast. Are, are Barcelona fast players? Yes, they have, yeah. a new, they have some new players who are really fast and getting into the game. Yeah. Um, Boston too, 